This is the reaction timer game. When the sound plays, the participants must press their designated button. The player with the fastest reaction time wins. At the end of the Button Bash tutorial video, you learn some simple code to control the duration of a game. In this tutorial, you will learn how to record the time it takes multiple players to press a button. To do this, you will use a counter variable to record time. You will also construct, manipulate, and analyze an array to declare a winner. All right, let's create a new project and call it Reaction Timer. We'll have text in our game, so let's create a sprite font variable and call it font. And let's go ahead and add and load the font. Right click on Reaction Timer Content, go to Add, and select a new item. Pick a sprite font here. Sprite font one, that's fine for now. Click add. There's our sprite font. We can set the size to something a little bit bigger. Let's try 30 and save it. Close that. And we'll go to the load content method and go ahead and load it as well. Make sure it's a string. Pause the video and add this code. We'll also have a sound that plays when the timer begins. So let's first create a sound effect variable, then add and load a sound. Call it ding. Now, let's add and load that sound. There we go. Let's also load it. I'm going to copy and paste this. And change that to ding. And from sprite font to sound effect. And there we go. Awesome. Pause the video, add the content and the code. We're going to use edge detection to register the button press that will record a player's reaction time. So let's set up a pad and old pad. For now, we'll just work with one controller and then scale up from there. We'll also need some variables to keep track of the overall time and individual, and, and individual times. We'll call them scores. And we definitely don't want to forget the variable that represents the overall time of the game, int timer. Pause the video and add this code. Well, let's go to the update method and start by initializing the pad1 gamepad state. Along the way, go ahead and shrink some of these methods up here so that the code is just easier to look at. And like I said, we're going to go into the update method. All right. And let's go ahead and initialize pad one to be equal to gamepad dot 
get state uh, player index dot one and we can go ahead and change this exit code to reflect pad one pause the video and add this code all right so we're going to use the start button to begin the game after the program starts running so that means player one will press start unfortunately this would give an unfair advantage to player one who starts the game it would be like four people lining up to run a race and one of the runners deciding when the race actually starts instead of starting the timer at zero we'll set it to a negative number so that it will count up to zero when it hits zero we'll play the sound and the game will start recording reaction times this gives all players the same anticipation time between the running of the game and the actual start of the game. The whole idea here is that player one will press start, two seconds, 120 ticks, will go by, and then the sound will play. At that point, everyone starts pressing their buttons. So let's go ahead and query the start button. I'm going to copy the code up here, paste it down here, and just simply change back to start. Nice. First thing I'm going to do is set timer to equal negative 120. And so that will allow me two seconds. 60 times 2 is 120. And I'll also set the scores, which are the reaction times, to 0. That way, someone could restart the game simply by pressing start again. And all the scores would go back to 0. The counting would be set back to negative 120. And we could play the game again. Now, if you were to have more controllers than player one, you could actually have a 16 player reaction timer game. You would just go ahead and initialize all the other scores in this block of code. Great. We also need to update the timer. So let's go ahead and do that. Timer plus plus. And let's also play the sound when the timer hits zero. Awesome. Pause the video and add this code. Now let's record the reaction time for the A button. We'll use that familiar edge detection code that you've seen before. Great, and so if the A button's pressed, we're going to go ahead and record the time it was pressed at into A score 1. The last thing we need to do here is set old pad 1 to pad 1. Awesome. Pause the video and add this code. Now, you can go ahead and do this for the B, X, and Y buttons on GamePad 1 as well, and if you wish, on the other controllers and buttons too. All right, we'll pause the tutorial and add the update code. We need to see the reaction times on the screen similar to how we saw them in a previous game, Button Bash. We'll need vectors to represent the placement of the text on the screen. We'll use the vector placements from the Button Bash game. Let's navigate to the Button Bash game and copy and paste the vectors. Go to File, Open File, and here's Button Bash. 
and I'll navigate to the Button Bash Game 1 class and open it. Notice how both of them are called Game1.cs. Make sure to know which one you're dealing with. Here I'm dealing with the Button Bash's Game1.cs. And what I'm going to do is simply copy and paste the vectors from the pad 1 and put them into my new reaction timer game. Pause the video and add this code. Now we'll copy some of the draw method code from the button bash game as well. Go back to the button bash game and since we already typed it once here we can be pretty sure it will work over here. And I'll end the sprite batch. Now if you're really lazy you could go back and copy and paste this sprite batch statement. But I don't think you're that lazy. What we will need to do is change these counts to scores. And there we go. Cool. Seems like it works. Let's uh, go ahead and try it. Pause the video and add this code. Well, I thought things were working fine, so I decided to play test it. What I found out was that when some people tried to anticipate the sound, they got a negative and therefore invalid reaction time, but were able to redo it to get a positive time, like this. So, what we need to do is allow people one button press and one press only. The question is, how can we tell if the button has been pressed more than once? What could the program check to decide whether a button has been pressed for the first or second time in the game? Well, we know that when the start button is pressed, all the player's scores are set to zero. The next time a player presses the button, the score is not zero. So what this means is that we should only update the score if the score was previously zero. If it's not previously zero, that means the player has already pressed their button. And if they jump the gun and press the button before the sound plays, they would stay with a negative invalid score. We can, we can accomplish this simply by adding another part to our condition for score updating. Take a look. Go to the update code and we're going to record the score when the A button is pressed with edge detection. In addition, we'll only record the score if the score was previously equal to zero. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and do this for all of my other buttons as well. Great. Well, go ahead and add this code. Cool. Let's run it. Aha. Let's try it again. There we go. Well, our code works. Currently, we have to look at all the scores and decide for ourselves who won. In the next tutorial, you'll use an array to record and analyze the scores to display the winner.